17 October, the United Kingdom and the European Union reach political agreement on the new withdrawal agreement and political declaration for the future relationship. This includes a revised protocol for Northern Ireland, which has been extensively debated in this House. This agreement is clear that Great Britain and Northern Ireland are one customs territory. Goods that are not at risk of moving to the European Union will attract no tariffs. These arrangements mean that Northern Ireland would remain in the UK's customs territory and could benefit from the UK's new trade deals with third countries. For goods moving from Great Britain to Northern Ireland, those destined for the European Union will have to comply with European Union rules. To ensure the correct tariffs are applied and that goods comply with the rules of the single regulatory zone, some information will be needed on goods moving from Great Britain to Northern Ireland. The deal also explicitly allows the United Kingdom to ensure unfettered market access for goods moving from Northern Ireland to Great Britain. There will be minimal targeted interventions designed to prevent, for example, designed to prevent, for example, trade in endangered species, something I would have thought, Mr House, this House, uh, Mr Speaker, this House agreed on. We will work with the European Union to eliminate these limited processes as soon as possible after Brexit. The most important point is that these arrangements automatically dissolve after four years unless a majority of the Northern Ireland Assembly in Stormont votes to keep them. Tony Lloyd. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And can I thank you for making time for this uh, urgent question, which really does matter. Mr Speaker, um, there is confusion at the very heart of this government. Yesterday, the Prime Minister told the House there will be no checks between Northern Ireland and Great Britain, and there will be no tariffs between Northern Ireland and Great Britain. This is in direct contradiction to what the Minister has just told the Secretary of State has just told the House. It's in contradiction with the, with the steadily progressing views of different statements from the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland. The Justice Secretary last night on the, uh, on the, um, the uh, uh, on, on the Newsnight, who told the House, uh, who told the, the public, there will be checks in both directions, from GB to Northern Ireland and Northern Ireland to GB. The manifest confusion at the heart of government actually is compounded by the confusion that business in Northern Ireland, particularly small business, that the Northern Ireland Civil Service have in planning for the long term, and this is simply unacceptable. Mr Speaker, this is legislation that the government is ramming through the House in three days, when the government itself doesn't properly understand what it's doing. Now, Mr Speaker, that of itself would be problematic. Um, but, and we clearly do need absolute clarity as we move forward. But I've also got to say to the Secretary of State, and whilst it's outside his immediate brief, there are other consequences. This House spent a, hard time, a long time arguing there should be no hard border across the island of Ireland in order to, to prevent the, the impact on the nationalist community. We didn't think we'd be coming back talking about the impact on uh, the unionist community, on political unionism. Mr Speaker, I must quote from the, the new Chief Constable of the uh, Police Service of Northern Ireland, who talked about the loyalist community and said, whatever ends up as a Brexit deal, if there is one that could be perceived in a way that sort of threatens the security of the loyalist community, our concern is also the loyalist community has at times shown it can mobilise quickly, bring large numbers of people onto the streets and engage in public disorder in support of their cause. I hope every member of this House takes that warning very, very seriously, because it's a profound warning from a senior and experienced police officer. Mr Speaker, I have a number of specific questions for, this, for the Secretary of State. First of all, what overall Im impact assessment has the Government made for the Northern Ireland economy? But what assessment has been made for the trading ports and airports in Scotland, Wales and England? If the HMRC makes an estimate, as uh, they do, that each uh, declaration will cost between £15 and £56 pounds for, for uh, shipments from Great Britain to Northern Ireland. Um, if the Border Force are also saying there will be need for um, minimal electronic checks uh, to be uh, a minimum amount of electronic information on movements from west to east. Um, when will the Secretary of State be able to give certainty to businesses as to what those checks will be, how they will be undertaken? But if the Justice Secretary is right when he said to Newsnight that there will be checks from, from Northern Ireland to Great Britain, as he told 
uh, the world last night. When will we know what those checks are in detail and not simply superficially to dismiss them as of no import? Mr Speaker, um, in the end, the Government has got to put an end to this confusion. Will the Secretary guarantee he will make an early statement to the House as to the full impact of the checks in both directions? But, Mr Speaker, I have also got to ask, does the Secretary of State accept the view of the Chief Constable of Northern Ireland about the potential impact and the warning that he's made? Does the Government take this seriously? And if they do, um, what, uh, what assessment do they make of that? And finally, Mr Speaker, I've got to ask the political point, but it's an important one. Does the Secretary of State believe that the Prime Minister himself now at, at last understands the impact of the deal that he's created, its impact on Northern Ireland, its impact on the relationships between Northern Ireland and the rest of our country? Yeah.